Welcome to Faith is the Victory podcast, a ministry outreach of Faith Christian Center in Cairo, Georgia. This is Pastor David Coleman, Sr. Today's devotional is titled, From Bitter to Sweet. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Exodus 15, 22 through 23. The Christian life is filled with many opportunities to learn lessons in faith. Some lessons are quick and require minimal effort, whereas others are much longer and require great endurance. Regardless, we learn that the lessons never stop and the learning continues throughout the person's life. The learning doesn't end, that's true, and there is no set graduation date predetermined to work toward. And sadly, too often we fail to learn the lessons the first time through, and we wind up retaking the same lessons over and over again. We fail to learn and matriculate to the next level of our faith walk, so we linger back repeating the same lessons many times over. This repetition creates a wearing effect on the person's endurance, and fatigue begins to set in, most often coupled with discouragement. When these lessons of life grow stagnant, we find ourselves drinking from the unpalatable, bitter pools that cry out for a cure that only God can provide. In these times, we should fill our mouths with faith-filled words from Scripture, as God's Word never returns to Him void, but accomplishes the task for which He sent it, Isaiah 55. We see this lesson lived out in the lives of Moses and the children of Israel when we look at the Exodus account a moment when God's blessings were poured out on his people. Scripture tells us that the things we read about from the Old Testament are examples for our learning, 1 Corinthians 10, 11 through 13, so that we will not be in ignorance, but will know the will of God. So in Exodus 15, we find the children of Israel just days after one of the greatest and most miraculous events that took place in the Old Testament, the parting of the Red Sea. Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt after the ten plagues came upon Egypt. They left taking with them all the gold and silver, and not one feeble person was found among the Israelites. Psalms 105:37. Three days after the miraculous seabed crossing on dry ground, Moses and the Israelites found themselves in the wilderness of Shur, and they were without water and were thirsty. They came to the waters of Marah, but they could not drink because the waters were bitter. Instead of turning to God, they blamed Moses. Instead of remembering the pillars of cloud, and fire, which protected them, they complained, Exodus 13, 21. Instead of remembering that they crossed the Red Sea on dry land when the waters parted and were congealed, they murmured, Exodus 15, 8. How often do we do the same? How often do we forget? How often do we turn to our misery instead of God who delivers us from our misery? Too often, far too often, we forget all that God has done and we only see our current crisis. We murmur and complain instead of doing what Moses did. You see, Moses prayed. And his prayer was not filled with doubt and unbelief and accusations against God. No, he turned to God and cried unto him with his whole heart, a heart filled with faith. That's what we must do. Turn to God in faith in our moments of need. And when Moses prayed in faith, God heard his cry and did the miraculous. He showed him a tree, a tree that represented a tree that our Savior Jesus would hang upon to redeem us and deliver us from the bitterness of sin. So Moses obeyed God and did as he said. Moses threw the tree into the bitter waters of Marah, and the waters were healed. 
the waters became sweet. Yes, sweet water to drink, and the people's thirst was satisfied. How often do we experience difficulty in our lives and then turn against the one who holds all the answers? We are too quick to forget what God has done for us. We are too quick to forget the blessings that fill our testimonies of God's goodness and provision from past experiences, and we strike at him with questions, with criticisms, and with complaints. We must learn from the Scripture and the experiences of those in the Scripture, for they are our examples. So after God used the tree to heal the bitter waters of Marah, he made a statute and an ordinance with the children of Israel. He said, If thou wilt diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Exodus 15, 26. That day, the Lord revealed himself as the healer, the one who takes the bitterness of sickness and disease and makes them sweet. Yes, he was their healer at the bitter waters of Mara. He is still the healer today. We know this. God does not change. He has not changed, and he will not change. For he says in Malachi 3, 6, I am the Lord, I change not. And another thing, he does not lie. Hebrews 6, 18, the Lord does not lie. Praise God. Yes, the Lord is still the Lord that healeth thee today. But you might say, yes, but I have to keep all his ordinance and statutes. And I have to hearken diligently to the Lord. And I have to do what is right in his sight. And I have to give ear to all his commandments and keep them just like it says in Exodus 15. I have news for you, my friends. Jesus did all of that for you. He did all that God required for you to be in right standing at all times with our Heavenly Father. All that is required of you to keep all that God requires is that you repent and believe the gospel, Mark 1, 15. You see, when Jesus came to this world and took on human flesh, he did so for one reason, to redeem man back to God. It was impossible for man to satisfy God's requirement on his own. Man couldn't do it. So God came and did that for us through Jesus. You see, Jesus took upon himself the sins of the world so that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life, John 3, 16. So he accomplished all the requirements that the law held over us, and then he offered his own innocent blood to pay the price for sin, because without the shedding of blood is no remission of sin, Hebrews 9, 22. So because of Jesus' finished work at Calvary, we are made free from our inability to satisfy the law's requirements, and we now partake of the finished work that Jesus did for us. And in so doing, he gives us the power to live free from the bondage of sin and death. Read Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 14. And that, my friends, is good news. It is good news, and it is the gospel. Can you say amen to that? So you see, Jesus did for us what we could not do for ourselves, and our faith in him allows us to partake of his finished work at Calvary. And in so doing, we partake of the sweetened waters of Mara. You see, that tree Moses threw into the bitter waters there at Mara was a foreshadowing of the cross that Jesus would die on. And that cross makes sweet all of the bitterness that sin has brought upon us. So let's take a moment where you are and let's thank him for the cross 
and what he did on it for you. Yes, Lord, we do that now. We thank you, Lord, for the cross. We thank you, Lord, that the cross takes the bitterness of sin away from us because, Lord, our faith is in you. Our faith is in the finished work that you did on that cross, Lord. And by your blood, our sins are removed, washed away, completely blotted out. And we now stand before you, Lord, in right standing with you. And for that, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. I'm going to say amen to this encouraging word today. And I'm going to ask you to say amen with me. So if you can, say it out loud. Amen. Amen. Friends, before I leave you today, I would like to invite you to visit our Faith Christian Center Church website at FCCKairo.com. F-C-C-C-A-I-R-O.com. There you will find information about our church and our service times, along with links to our church YouTube channel. I would also like to ask you to consider sharing this podcast with your family and friends and whoever the Lord may lay on your heart, as I believe it will bless them just as it has you. So thank you, friends, for listening today to our Faith is the Victory podcast. Join us again next time as we continue to discover that faith is the victory that overcomes the world. This is Pastor David Coleman Sr. of Faith Christian Center in Cairo, Georgia.